in the Riverlands after the bloody battle that became known as the Fish Feed. So Kristen Cole and Prince Aemon Targaryen took the decision to abandon the castle of Harrenhal. Aemon left on Vagar well before Cole, bring ruin to the keeps and castles of the Riverlands. Cole instead decided to march south along the western shore of the God's Eye with 3,600 men behind him. As they marched, death, disease and desertion had thinned the ranks that had ridden forth from King's Landing. As he drove his men south through the Riverlands, smoke rose up before him and behind him. Every village that he found had been burned and abandoned. His column moved through forests of dead trees where living woods had been just days before on their march from the capital to Harrenhal. As the river lords set blazes all along his line of march in every brook and pool and village well he found death, dead horses, dead cows, dead men, swollen and stinking, befouling the drinking water. Soon, cold supplies began to run out. Elsewhere, his scouts came across a ghastly table where armoured corpses sat beneath the trees in rotting remnants in a grotesque mockery of a feast. The feasters were men who had fallen in the fish feed, skulls grinning under their rusted helms as their green and rotted flesh slothed off their bones. Four days out of Harrenhal, the attacks began. Archers hid amongst the trees, picking off outriders and stragglers with their longbows. Men died. Men fell behind the rear guard and were never seen again. Men fled, abandoning their shields and spears to fade into the woods like ghosts. Men went over to the enemy as well. In the village commons at Crossed Elms, another of these ghastly feasts were found. Familiar with such sights by now, Sir Kristen's outriders grimaced and rode past, paying no heed to the rotting dead corpses, until the corpses sprang up and fell upon them. A dozen died before they realised it had all been a ploy, the work of a mirish sellsword in the service of Lord Vance, a former mummer called Black Trombo. All of this, though, was but a prelude, for the Lords of the Trident had been gathering their forces. When Sir Criston left the lake behind him, striking out over land for the black water, he found that the Lords of the Trident waiting for them atop a slopey ridge. 300 mounted knights in armour, as many longbowmen, 3,000 standard archers, 3,000 ragged rivermen with spears, hundreds of northmen brandishing axes, mauls, spiked maces, and ancient iron swords, and even a small contingent of his own men who had turned cloak. Above their heads flew the quartered banner of Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen. Who are they? A squire asked when the foe appeared, for they showed no arms but the queen's. Our death answered Sir Kristen Cole, for these foes were fresh, better fed, better horsed, better armed, and they held the high ground, where his own men were stumbling, sick, and their will almost broken. Calling for a peace banner, King Aegon's hand rode out to treat with them. Three came down from the ridge to meet him. Chief amongst them was Sir Gary Bold Grey in his dented plate mail. Peter Longleaf was with him too, the lion slayer who had cut down Jason Lannister, together with Roddy the Ruin the commander of the northern army, bearing his scars that he had taken at the fish feed. If I strike my banners, do you promise us our lives? So Kristen asked the three of them. I made my promise to the dead, Sir Garibald said. I told them I would build a set for them out of traitors' bones. I do not have near enough bones yet. So Kristen answered, if there is to be a battle here, many of your own will die as well. The Northman, Roderick Dustin, laughed at these words. That is why we have come, boy. Winter is here. Time for us old men to go. No better way than to die with a sword in your hand. So Kristen drew his longsword from his scabbard. As you will it, we can begin here. The four of us. One of me against the three of you. Will that be enough to make it a fair fight? But Longleaf, the Lion Slayer, said, I want three more. And up on the ridge, Red Rob Rivers and two of his archers raised their long bows. Three arrows whistled through the air, across the field, striking Sir Criston in the belly, neck and breast. I'll have no songs about how bravely you died, Kingmaker, declared Longleaf. There's tens of thousands of dead on your account. But by the time he had finished his sentence, he was already speaking to a corpse. The battle that followed was as one-sided as any in the Dance of the Dragons. Lord Roderick raised a battered old warhorn to his lips and sounded the charge. 
and the Queen's men came screaming down the ridge, led by the winter wolves on their shaggy northern horses and the knights on their armoured desseries. With Sir Criston dead upon the ground, the men who had followed him from Harrenhal lost all heart. They broke and fled almost immediately, casting aside their shields as they ran. But their foe came after them, cutting them down by the hundred. Afterwards, Sir Garibald was heard to say, Today was nothing but butchery, not battle. In the histories of the Seven Kingdoms, this bloody battle and the death of Sir Criston Cole, the Kingmaker, was dubbed the Butcher's Ball, and so it has been known ever since. Mm-hmm.